Welcome to The Daily Dose with Dr. Kendra, your OBGYN next door, and Dr. Ten, your anesthesiologist from around the way. And we are Doctors Ken and Ten. Here we will be prescribing you with a daily dose of info, drama, Ooh. and the real reality checks. Mm -hmm. So make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to us at Doctors Ken and Ten. All right, let's get started. So today we are going to be talking about friendships. And what exactly does a best friend look like? I mean, we are women of a certain age, 40 and above, and um, do we still call our friends best friends? Have we grown past that? I mean, what is, what is a best friend, Kendra? What's a best friend to you? So when I was younger, you know, I had one best friend. As I've gotten older and I've done many things, I lived in different places, you actually have, you know, different people holding you down at different points in your life. So it's kind of like, well, who do you say is your best friend now? When I was a kid, I also had one best friend, right? That one best friend, she was do or die. Right. That was, that was the right. only one that was like my soldier. And everybody knew who your best friend was. Yes. Didn't they? They like, thieves. <laughs> but then as we got older, we started to kind of branch out. And like, you had a best friend who was the good listener. You had the best friend that gave really good sound advice. Mm -hmm. You had the best friend that could kick it till six in the morning mm -hmm. and wouldn't complain. Like you had a best friend for everything. Right, right. So basically for me now, it's like best friend is not a person. Best friend is a level. Mm. So, you know, at my level right now. What know, level, what level of best friend am I? Um, you are oh, oh, my oh. work best friend, right? Uh -huh, that's okay, true. Okay, that's true. Because, because now it's like, okay, you have multiple best friends because different people hold you down in different arenas. When I was in residency, different jobs that I've, I've gone and I've left, I still keep in touch with them. Yeah. Your historic friends. The one from back, back, back in the day. So I have a question for you. I want to know, what do you do? Let's just say you have an issue with one of your best friends, because clearly you have many. Right, right, okay. right, right. You have an issue with one of your best friends. Do you talk about that issue and that best friend to another best friend behind her? Now, yes and no. So if this other friend who knows her maybe have better insight of how I can go about resolving our conflict, I may confide in them to see how I can go about conflict resolution. And you're gonna talk about her like she's a bitch to the best friend that, that doesn't know her. her. Yes! That, that's probably the yeah. safest. Yeah. Bitch always pulls I'm this done. shit. I'm she done. She keeps pulling, I can't stand this. That's what you do with I'm best leaving friend. her in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do with that best friend. Let's just say you have a historic friend, someone you've known almost all your life, and you're at a point in your life where you just aren't gelling anymore. You don't have the same interests anymore. This is the classic, we grew apart. You grew apart. I mean, what does that so really mean? So what do you- What does that mean? Well, it means you are this way and she's that way. So what do you do with this historic friend? Do you, how do you break up with a historic friend? Or do you break up? Or do you just keep them? Or do you trick off? Meaning you don't say anything and you just let it fizzle. Yeah, distance. I had a historic friend. Okay. She was my bestie as long as I can remember. Okay, so like your first best friend. That was, like your, was best friend. Friend. your best friend. Your best friend. Things start to get rocky, I think, in college. And mostly because I think that's where um, our interests differ. She kind of partied a little okay, bit. Okay, hard. Okay, she saw me just out there. And that wasn't fun for me, mm -hmm. you know? So we just kind of drifted apart. And then um, once I was in medical school, she had a party, a New Year's party, and um, we ended up in a fist fight. For real? We ended up in a fist fight what? on the streets of Chicago. How oh, does it anyway, get to, to blow? We were at a point in our relationship where I knew, I think we both knew it was over. Really? We had been growing apart since freshman year of college, and I think we both felt like you know, it was like breaking up with a, a boyfriend. It, it's, it's and it was serious, serious it's right? That serious. It was that serious. And I think that was how it ended up in a fight. Not because we hated each other. Right. But it was like, oh, why, you know, why couldn't you stay my best friend? You get fight? mad at the situation. Like, why can't we survive this? Yeah. And we just, and after that fight, we, we did survive it. We did. Most most women, let's be honest here. Let's let's well, stop well, and make a point here. Most women, after you start, after it gets physical, you cannot 
survived a couple years later it got to a point where it was like just one little thing she did and i was like i'm done you're done because it was, was probably already over. I was done and like we just never called each other again. That's how it happens, huh? Yeah. That means you guys were really going on different paths. Yeah. Like, I'll tell you what type of friend I am. I'm usually, this is before heart. I'm the friend that's friends with the people that a lot of people don't like. So I would be friends with a woman where maybe she may be known as a bitch mm -hmm. or like a mean girl or she may have high maintenance ways that a lot of people don't have the patience for but i do i noticed that maybe it's something in me that i attract those type of women difficult women am i difficult am i difficult girl you just you independent you independent and so kendra after heart as soon as that man because he came out like a grown-ass man he came out crying man. like Okay, so he took from me, I guess, patience. I don't know. I don't gel with that woman anymore. Yeah. That woman who is calling me and where are you? Why haven't you? Why can't I? I don't have the capacity. And I look back at how did I do that before? So did you have historic friends that you had to let go because you're no longer patient? I, I really don't let go of anybody. Okay, you know, maybe that's another, I'm loyal to a fault. If we see you each other, out. we see each other. If we, she lets it you know what I'm out. saying? And, I, and that's how I used to break up with my boyfriends too. So I never used to actually say it's over. I just didn't call anymore. Well, that's better than punching them in the face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if your best friend or betrayed you? I have, I mean, have you had this happen? Not yet. Me either. Not I've yet. not had this happen. And you know what? I just don't know how I would feel because betrayal, betrayal. That's, that's hard to get past. And my best friend now is a guy named Hobart Leung. My best friend, my best friend, tell us, is Hobart. Tell us easy. Okay? So <laughs> it's Hobart. And so it be, I think that's what happened. It becomes your husband that becomes your best friend. Mac is my best friend, but my girls are my soulmates. So, Elaborate. So Mac is my best friend because, you know, that's my ride or die, that's okay. my everyday. We do everything together. Um, we're raising a family together. And there's certain things that, you know, I talk to him about, but like that innermost, mm -hmm. because let's let's talk about, we have we have our past, Britain, our before Mac. Right, 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 right. Britain, I bet you right? she was something. Right, right, right. So only my girls know that girl. So like, <laughs> sometimes I need to talk about right. that Britain. Right, right, right. And only my girls know. It's like y'all know, y'all know, know the old me is creeping back. They know my soul, yeah. and right? And that's called it's balance. That's a, that's a good point. Michelle Obama did mention something like that. You need your girlfriends. Because you everybody kept talking, you know, because Obama is the bomb, okay? So, but she said she still needs her girlfriends because her Absolutely. girlfriends keep her sane. They do, you know? because they know your soul. Girl, they deep. know you for how many years? Back when you was kicking it with Ray Ray, ah! right? Back when your mama was like, you ain't going nowhere because you stole a car, okay? So ah! like, those, you need those girls. And so I think, you know, yeah, Mac is my best friend, but my girls are my soul. I love it, I'm with it. The question I pose to you guys is, can your best friend be your husband? Mm. I say that because you know, as far as my husband, he's not really into the petty shit. And let's be honest, okay? I will be frank right now. Sometimes you wake up in a mood. It's Monday morning and you just want to be a Monday morning bitch. Mm. And you need to call up your girl like, hey, Dr. Ten, I'm not feeling none of this that I'm doing right now. Men don't want to hear that. And you want to vent and complain. You want to be petty sometimes. And you want to talk about somebody that it may be just the way they look. Yes. And, and or, cool. or maybe you want to talk about yourself, you know? Can your husband, Can your husband really be your best friend? Hit us up with that one. Mm. What do you say to the friend that never has money and is super cheap? Do you keep that person around? Like, why are we still friends 
with this person. If she does not share our financial status, is that a reason to let her go? For sure. Let me tell you something. And I know I said for sure certain because I went back to school to further my education so I can make more money, so I could do things such as ballet, never walking nowhere. Like I've got heels on, wherever we're going, I'm gonna ballet. Mm. Second, I went to school because so I wanted tip. to afford, tip, that's one. If I am pumping gas at the gas station and I may want some Gatorade, some water, some gum, I'm gonna spend that money, okay? And if, so I went back to school to afford such luxuries as tipping, valet, buying shit when I'm hungry no matter where we are. When you go to a restaurant and it's time for the bill to come and it's a table of six women and there's that one girl that's like, girl, can you spot me this time? Cause I ain't got, I ain't got enough. What do you do, mm -hmm. Dr. Chen? when you usually go out in a big group? I'm gonna tell you the truth. What do you do? So I am a cheap friend who has money. So she's keeping it real. So okay. I, I am that cheap person. So please don't throw me out. Okay. Just because I'm cheap. So like I can get full off of $5, just like $25. So if y'all trying to go to some ritzy fancy restaurant, just don't call me. Oh, so you don't like to eat out I, at restaurants? Five I'm, stars. I mean, I can, I, I will, but I'm probably gonna get something small and I'm gonna pay for just what I eat. I'm that cheap. Oh, friend. I was just gonna pay that, that cheap Okay, friend. so that's the thing. So I'm that cheap friend. I'm gonna divvy it all up and I'm not going to pay for your alcohol because that shit's expensive. But you know what? I, okay, I, I agree with that, like, especially if you don't have anything. If I have a meal, I will just split the check minus. The alcohol. That's fair. I do that. I'll split the check because five Because she does not drink. Minus the so alcohol. So that is, I, that is fair. So but like, if I like show up and y'all are eating and I just get an appetizer, no, I'm not splitting. I'm just going to put some money down. And you know an what? Appetizer. And I would even have a problem with that. Yeah. I have a problem with we're all picking out and somebody wants to be like, how much do I owe? I'm the That's friend me. where I'm like, we all splitting this shit because we all got to go. And you know that you ate from everybody's plate. Well, we're that's all different. sharing if here. If you like, are all is, sharing, I don't, I don't think so. Yes, if I don't you're all sharing, so. I think you should share the bill. But if you're not, and you know you don't want to pay for everybody's shit, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't assume that you just gonna pay for everything just because we're all sitting at this table. So I'm the person that'll say I'm very fair. So to a point where it can be annoying. I'm like, like what? okay, like what? to the penny. I'm like, okay, um, you'll owe 63.23, you'll owe 64.25. Like I will, but, I will divvy up So you're a fair spirit. cheapskate. I'm a fair cheapskate. Is that fair to say? Yes. I will not let anybody pay for me. Are you giving eyes to the, the folks I just out like there? how I just threw those words on there. Was a double entendre? What okay. is that called? Okay. Yes, I am, I'm the fair cheapskate. Hey, but most but people I have, but are not I there. Have, they, they try to ease. I don't like, do that. Like, like I don't like, get people. She got it. She got it. Yeah, see, she I don't she do got that. that bag. So, but here's the thing. She got. I got the bag, <laughs> and I spent all my money on the fucking bag. So, and no, I don't got it because I am cheap. I will not be the one paying for shit. So I will drop your ass if you that friend that's trying to like. <laughs> If you ain't never got no money, I'm not gonna call you for shit. I'm not calling you to do nothing. We're not taking vacations it's too together. much. This is too much. This we is not going me. to dinner together. Call me, girl. Right. Call we me. ain't going to the movies. Better yet, not, just text. We because not I don't even, I'm probably together. busy making money so I can yeah. spend that. I'm shit, cheap, so. but I'm fair. I'm gonna pay for my shit. But if you trying to freeload, no, dude, dude. Doses. Doses. <laughs> Question for you. What about the toxic friend? See, now I know exactly what I would do. Mm -hmm. I just I, I just have to just kind of just distance myself. You know, I don't have the energy anymore. You know, before heart, I would, you know, even try to solve their problem. Mm, try to help them through it. Right, but at this point in my life, at this age, you know what, you've been doing this shit since junior high. This is how you like to be. I just don't have that the energy for yeah. it. And I look back, and say, damn, girl, you have the energy to do all this and force your opinions and on other Try people. Try to help folks out. Yeah, and, and you know, life. preaching till mm -hmm. my throat is just sore, you know, and now it's that just like, you know what? I'm too tired. I, I, I feel like now you have a disconnect from your friends because you're a new mom. 
okay what i personally feel i don't really feel a disconnect from my friends what i feel is that when you're with the baby all the time and when you're just you know your life your world just changes and everything is baby everything mm -hmm. And when I would talk to my girlfriends, all I wanted was some tea. Like, what are the adults doing? To my single girlfriends, I mean, how is the D? Is it good? What's happening? But the thing is, all they wanted to do was talk about heart. Baby. And I just needed to like, oh my God. So it became overwhelming because I couldn't get away from so did heart. You, did you distance yourself from your friends then? Um, no, I would just tell them, like, I need a break. I had to say, you know what? Can we talk about something else? Mm -hmm. I remember when my friends started having babies. Mm -hmm. I was actually not afraid to call them, but I felt like I was in the way. Mm -hmm. I just thought, you know what? They're so busy. I'm not going to even bother them. And then one of my good friends, she was like, dude, why would you think that? I need you more now than ever. That's I true. need, just like you're saying, I need that escape. I need to like, talk to my please, girls. I need please. to know what's going on on the outside. Please. But I didn't see that. I know I distanced myself mm -hmm. from my girlfriends who had babies. So you weren't thinking like, I'm distancing because I don't want you to ask me to babysit? No. Once I had kids, then I was like, oh, yeah, now I need that. I mean, can I we go out for a drink? Yeah. Can I just go out and just people watch yes. without the baby? Get maybe, dressed up. Oh, my God. And maybe watch somebody else's baby. Like, oh, that baby is cute. Just as they walk on by. But not cuter than mine. Yeah. <laughs> I remember lots of, like, um, points in time where I didn't talk to my girls for months. For months? For months. Because I was so inundated with two small kids they're right. very close in age yeah tell me the ages so they're a, not even a year and a half they're less Damn. than a year and a half apart so i was just i was busy i was working you know i was making dinner every night which you know i don't do now oh my god you were really doing yes, that yes i was cooking so i was what? just so busy being a new mom i know hopefully we'll okay and you were working too yeah Damn. So I just I so I know and not on purpose. I didn't distance myself from my friends on purpose, but it was I just didn't think about it. I just didn't because there's no it was time. like I'm gonna call her tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna call my And girls now tomorrow. I get it. Now yeah. I get that. Yeah. There's literally no. no time. I didn't even think like, girl, let me call up so and so and see how she did. And and, and my friends who were you know the kids were the same age. Mm -hmm. They didn't call me either because they were just as busy. <laughs> Right. So like there were right, moments, right. like let's for instance, like me and Contessa, right? We had kids around the same age, but there was a point in time I remember for months she and I wouldn't talk because we were both so busy. Right. But like the husbands would talk because you know husbands ain't really mm -hmm. they're keeping each other posted on what's yeah. going on. They and they ain't really as busy as us. So like they, so Mac would come back and tell me what's going on with Contessa. So that's how you, that was so your that connection. Was, yeah. Like okay, she doing good. Because, yeah. Cause okay. He talked to Scott. Right. Right. Out. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's how I would find out. But like we were just busy and then it wasn't until maybe school age where i was like okay there's some there's a little bit of normalcy here and the kids are breathe. a little bit self-sufficient and then after that you know i just Damn. left them in a room and didn't even pay attention to what they okay were doing. so there's hope for me now that i'm realizing as the older we get because we're wearing so many different hats that you really start having friends that it's go oriented without that common goal you really just lose sight of each other and you just go two separate ways so, so without you, that so common do you goal, feel like you have friends that like you have to, it's like you're doing something like you did it get a common goal like checking something off the list that you may need to do or that you want to do well i mean like, just, like so my best friends the best friends my little my core best friends we're always i think one thing about us that's special is our ambitions are matched so even if we're not doing projects together we're all doing something you know what I mean? Okay, so you so we have ambition for your core group? Yeah, That's I mean, like, because all of us are go-getters. So we're all ambitious women. We're all goal-oriented. So even if our goals aren't the same thing, like okay. maybe we're not working out together. Right. But this one is into um, yoga. And okay. this one is into Krav Maga. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter. We're both, we both have a common goal, even though it's not the same I goal. get it. So are you, you know saying I mean? you don't have, do you have any friends that really are not that ambitious? that are just no none like, all really? my friends i would say for the most part all my friends are equally ambitious goal oriented we're all striving for something none of us has stopped none of really? us really every single one of them all especially like my core the core people like my high school grammar school best like, friends, do you all my do best that okay do, to, is that done on purpose no I, I just think that our personalities are so similar 
that we're attracted to each other. You don't have that one friend. We all know of her. You either know her or you heard of her. That one friend that is just not doing anything and you're not even sure how she gets her money every month. No. You don't have any of those no. women. No, no time in your life. No, I mean, I think, you know, as I grew up with my core best friends, the ones who didn't share my ambition or we weren't on the same page, they just fell off. That's impressive. I'm sorry. I think, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts? They're, they're, what are all, your thoughts? they're all on the ground. We're all hustling. We're, we're, all, we're a group of hustlers. And I think that's why we're attracted to each other. Every day we hustle in. All right, well, okay. on that note. On that note. Thanks for joining us. Until next time. Thank you for stopping by to get your daily dose. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to us at Doctors Ken and Ten. Until next time. Doses. It's a daily dose. Daily dose. Daily dose. Wait, hold up. We gotta get this eyelash off. Okay. See, I'm a friend. Okay. <laughs> like. Mm, she's smoking something. Yeah. Okay. Child, please. You like my beauty mark? I put it on just for you, best friend, work best friend. Okay. <laughs> you can just do that. You know, I see freckles coming. Maybe Next week. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's do okay. it over again. Okay. I didn't like any of okay. it. Okay, alright.